Afterward, the D-Mail experiment, its name is Operation Erd, though I lost my chance to announce it, continues for two hours. During that time, every D-Mail goes back in time without a hitch. Now it's time to take a break. We're all hungry, and except for my Eerie, we've been up since last night. Go ahead and rest. I'm gonna have a go at it a little longer. She's been going at it for hours, and she's still full of energy. It's hard to believe she was so opposed to time travel research before. Her scientist's blood must be on fire. We've made a number of discoveries, but we can wait to assess them until after we eat. Dar and I leave the two girls to watch over the lab as we go shopping at the convenience store. We return from the convenience store to find the Brontu Workshop's one and only part-time warrior standing in front of the building. Hey, she's stretching. Ah, uh, sup? She notices me and calls me without stopping her exercises. What shenanigans are you up to this early in the morning? Shenanigans. This girl's a thing for unusual words. The kind you wouldn't believe. We're building the first time machine in human history. What the fuck, Reed? What? What? Why would you say that? Huh? Cool. Hey, shouldn't you be more surprised? Can't blame her for being skeptical. I didn't think it was possible either. <laughs> and it isn't that top secret. I thought you didn't want anyone to know. Crap! Uh, Parchai Warrior, please keep what I just said a secret. Uh, sure. By the way. Parchai Warrior glances at the Bronte workshop. The boss is really pissed. I wonder why. Why? Why? The noise. Whatever you're doing up there, it's got the whole building shaking, dust everywhere, kind of like an air raid. He was saying stuff like, What's the nutcase doing? I'ma raise his damn rent! Maybe you should go apologize. Oh boy, what if he kicks us out? Alright. Leave it to me, Dardo. Go tell my assistant to lay off of the experiments for now. Roger that! I won't forget you, soldier. Dardo salutes and then races up to the second floor. By the way, is Marcus A. Curry still here too? Yeah. Come to think of it, she did pick a fight with Christina yesterday. This is a slower down version of the title screen. Have you met before? Uh, no. Yesterday was first contact. First contact. That's a strange way of putting it. Oh, really? Weren't you a little hostile for a first contact? She's... my enemy. What? I barely heard her. Her voice was so low. I'm about to ask her to repeat herself, but Suzuha is staring at the ground in silence. Obviously doesn't want to talk about it. Did she call Kurisu her enemy? That doesn't make sense. How can she be your enemy? You just met, right? Yeah. Did she do something to you? Not to me. What does that mean? She did something to someone else? To the world, perhaps? And if you want, I can go talk things over with Christina. It doesn't really matter. Maybe you're blaming the wrong person? Jeez, give it a rest! She hits me with the glare. Anyway, should you apologize to the boss instead of talking to me? I heard Okarine in there. <laughs> Actually, I'm getting cold feet. I am Owen Kyoma, mad scientist who brings chaos to the world. I can't falter now. I steal myself and enter the brawn tube workshop. Part time warrior follows me inside. I have come! Mr. Braun is sitting at the counter inside, slipping delivery ramen. Even when I enter, he doesn't look away from the huge 42-inch CRT. Showing some news show's report on some celebrity divorce. Part-time warrior doesn't say anything. She's just gonna stand there and watch him rip me a new one. Eh, Okabe, the hell are you doing up there? Straight to the punch. He doesn't take his eyes off the TV. You notice he's up slipping his ramen. Yet despite his sedentary posture, he exudes extraordinary pressure. But now is not the time to falter. 
Uh, we're currently conducting experiments that will change the course of human history. The discoveries we make today will shape the world for centuries. I don't care what games you guys play. I'm the owner of this building, got it? And the building's really worn out. You keep shaking like that, you're gonna bring down the whole dam on your head. And the building's really worn out. You keep shaking like that, you're gonna bring the whole damn thing down on our heads. Better keep quiet about the dead on the floor. <laughs> Very interesting, Mr. Braun. Don't tell me you forged this building's earthquake safety certification. What if I did? Holy fuck! HOLY CRAP! Maybe we should seek shelter soon. It's been properly reinforced. Regardless, you guys are still shaking it too much. Huh. So what if a few buildings collapse? What's that? As I've said countless times before, our current experiment is the vital importance of the history of science. No to the history of human civilization itself. You probably shouldn't be picking that kind of a fight with... Tenojibi here. Mr. Braun. It's more important than prolonging this building's lifetime for another ten or so measly years. Building starts shaking again as soon as I finish speaking. Flakes of concrete start falling from the ceiling. 42 inch CRT's image goes to static. Damn it, Dar, what are you doing? I told you to stop the experiments! Oh, look up, eh? He's glaring at me. The ceiling is falling, you dumbass! Some god is my ramen! What are you doing, huh? No more shaking! Or I'll raise your rent by 10,000! What? If you raise it to 10,000, we're ruined! L leave it to me, Mr. Braun! Out of my honor! I swear there won't be any more shaking today! With that, I'll race out of the Braun tube workshop. Christina, stop the experiments at once! When I burst into the lab, I find the three of them in the middle of lunch. Mayuri has juicy chicken number one. Dara has a convenience store boxed lunch. Curse is eating cup noodles with a fork. Sorry, Okarin. Mayushi tried to warm up some chicken. I accidentally put it through reverse rotation, and then it started sparking. I see. I sent you an email. Didn't you get it? Your sarcasm is not appreciated, Christina. You know as well as I do that my phone is still attached to the phone wave named TBA. I disconnect my phone from the phone wave named TBA while grinding my teeth. <sighs> what do you want? Let's see what you have to say, assistant. We'll slowly get there. One more, please. One more, please. Stop screwing around! I'm the one who has to deal with Mr. Braun! But I gave you five days no advance notice. Yeah, timestamps from five days ago, but... Was he mad? Yeah, I could feel his killing aura. Dara turns pale. The two girls don't seem to care. They know not the wrath of Mr. Braun. Ignorance is bliss. Anyway, no more experiments today. Well, at least we got some good data. Then Kurzu hides her mouth with her hand as she yawns. I'm dead tired and my hair's dried out. I want to take a shower and go to sleep. I sigh and take a box lunch out of the convenience store bag. It's cold, so I toss it into the phone wave, name TBA, and set the timer normally. Normally. If you want a shower, there's one here. It doesn't have a bath, though. Okadine always uses it. It's probably filthy. I'd be lying if I called it clean. The entire building is in shambles. Anyway, I refuse to use the same shower as Okabe. I understand. Nobody will blame you if you don't use it. Of course, since the three of us stayed up all night, we're all pretty smelly. <laughs> Given the sweltering heat and the fact that we kept the closed windows closed all night, I bet this place is smelling pretty rank by now. That's why I'm going back to my hotel once I finish eating. There's your slurps or cup noodles indigently. I bought them at her request. She was raised in America, yet she likes cups and noodles. Strange indeed. Saving to make sure, uh, we don't get yelled at by Curry Zoo. Lukako. About frogs. Um, Gilma-san, are you familiar with Garo Froggies? They were a huge fad last year. We have a ton of them. We have a tons of them at the shrine. So if you like, could you take a few off our hands? Dad brought a whole box home for some reason. Then he said they were for me. I don't know what to do with them. 
P.S. I was so bewildered, I couldn't do any practice swings with Samidara. That last year's girl is an organization plot. You know the stories you tell paint a very different picture of your father than the impression I got from meeting him. Which is the true him, I wonder. Um... When frog things were popular with... If I'm not mistaken, they came out with a bright variety of them. Yeah. I don't really want to be a total dick. <laughs> Alright. <sighs> Strange indeed. Celebrity bath time at a high-class hotel? I want to come too. Not a chance. Mayushi wants to come too. You can come anytime, Mayuri-san. Really? Thank you! I take my warm food out of the microwave and take a fresh do bottle of Dr. P out of the fridge and join in on lunch. Hey, Okurin, I've been wondering, why do you drink soda while you eat? Does it make it taste better? Mmm, I don't really see a problem. Me neither. Same. I didn't give it a second thought. <laughs> no one, no one finds it weird. Okay. Eh? You're acting weird, Mayuri. It's normal to drink soda while eating. It's normal, duh. No objections. Wh Is this not normal? No way. You guys are the weird ones. Well, I'm a pure dark Purian. Daru loves cola like a typical fat otaku, and Curry's who lives in America, home of soda. So I admit our opinion is biased. <laughs> but that doesn't matter right now. Now let's discuss Operation Erd's progress. Operation Erd? Oh right, thanks to a certain assistant I didn't get a chance to present the Operation's code name yesterday. Heed me, these D-mail experiments are all part of Operation Erd. Experiments have been fruitful. She's interrupting me again. At the very least, we've learned what we can do with D-mail. Curious replaces her empty noodle cup at the table, then retrieves the whiteboard from the development room. So wait a second. Do I have a whole bunch of things in the past? Change ETA with timer, one second equals one hour. Okay. Oak Bay is an airhead. I drank so much coffee, I, it hurts. <laughs> How many letters work? What's up? It's all good. Bye. What's up? It's all good. Bye. I am... I I guess that probably says Makise Kurisu. Christina is not my... Christina is not... <laughs> Three lines is the limit. One more, please. Okay, timer change with 60 seconds. Okay. And then... Oh, that, that's, uh... Change ETA with timer, one second equals one hour. Right, okay, makes sense. While the rest of us eat, she scribbles on the whiteboard, then pulls it up against the wall. Puts it up against the wall. That about sums it up. Anything to add? Uh, I can't actually see because of the, the HUD. Uh, something command for microwave warming function, reverse rotation. Uh, microwave door open while warming is in progress. Timing unconfirmed. Discharge phenomenon. Send mail to phone wave. Name subject to change <laughs> during discharge. I wonder who wrote that in. Conditions for discharge. Uh, 12 to 8? Demail text limit. 12 1 byte or 6, six 2 byte care. Times 3. Any more fails to send. Distance in the past depends on phone wave. Name subject to change. Timer input. 1 second on timer equals 1 hour in the past. Okay, I guess that, that makes sense. Contents of microwave became Jellymen. Confirmed to also teleport. Nothing especially. She summarized the vital parts. Mayuri has her mouth half open in a blank stare. She clearly doesn't understand. Now, D-mail can be at most 36 English characters or 18 Japanese characters long. That makes experimentation difficult, so we'll want to improve that first. Furthermore, each email is split into 12 character segments. If you send 36 characters, you'll get three 12 character emails. If you try to send more, everything after the 36 character disappears. But we figured out how to control when it arrives. That's pretty good, right? Though we can only set it for one hour increments, we can control how far back emails go by using microwave's timer. Observation isn't enough. 
We need to find the underlying principle. What I've written here is nothing but verified phenomena. The underlying principle. You're right. It's not a complete time machine until we understand how it works. What could that reason be for the character limit? Darwin Curious remains silent. Um... Suddenly, Mayuri, who has been staring at the ceiling in confusion up until now, raises her hand. Chicken and bananas become gel chicken and gel nanas, but salt doesn't turn into gel salt, right? So much gel. According to Mayuri, the refrozen chicken had indeed been jellified when she tried eating it. Curious's prediction was right. And you could send 36 letters in an email, but everything past that disappears, right? So, I think maybe you can't say big things, or a lot of small things. Ah, uh, maybe the curb black hole... Uh, it's curb... curb black hole. Ah, uh, the curb black hole... Cur black hole. The black hole's hole is too tight. Mayushi, say that one more time, starting from hole. The hole is too tight. Outrageous! Stop making her say stuff like that! Mary has flowers for brains, so she's easy prey for Dara's perversions. It drives me crazy. The hole is tight. Uh, that might not be entirely wrong. Maybe we have the same problem CERN has with their time machine. Since they can't fully control the lifter, they can't make the singularities perfectly naked, which limits how much they can send. Anyway, 6 Japanese or 12 English characters comes out to 12 bytes. English characters are half width, so they only use 1 byte, but full width Japanese characters count as 2. Bytes, not kilobytes? Oh? So Maka sees she's bad with computers? <laughs> Is that so, assistant? Uh, shut up! You don't see things measured in bytes nowadays. I was just making sure. By the way, one kilobyte is 1,024 bytes, so one byte is 8 bits. Well, email isn't just comprised of text. There's more to it, like the sender and receiver's email addresses, the header, and various other things. So, roughly speaking, we could send data in three batches of 12 bytes, then. By the way, I don't know if using a subject changes anything. But I'm pretty sure that chicken and bananas have to be larger than 12 bytes. <coughs> How do you measure banana in bytes anyway? Since each grain of salt is tiny, it's possible they could be converted into less than 12 bytes. So larger masses get crushed by supergravity. Mass might not be the issue here. Data doesn't have mass. In any case, since the singularity isn't naked, the object is forced to pass through the event horizon. Inside the event horizon, space and time switch places, causing the subject that arrived at the ring singularity to reach ultra-high speed. The data, crushed and destroyed by supergravity, is shot out of the black hole. As a jelly man. But even a small mass has to pass through supergravity. How does it emerge unscathed? If the hole is too tight, then just inject more electrons. I don't think it's that simple. I mean, I'm sure CERN's tried that already, and yet they haven't gotten any results after nine years of experiments. It's not as simple as increasing the flow of electrons. Mm, I see. CERN, ha CERN has a lifter, but we don't know what in the phone wave is filling the same role, much less how to adjust it. She has a point. We don't know what acts as the lifter. But we do know that it has successfully created a path wide enough to send approximately 36 bytes of data through the ring singularity. I don't get it. Mayuri finished with the chicken, looks at us in confusion. Think of it like an RPG. The ring singularity, the entrance to the event horizon, is the gate to the Demon Lord's castle. D Demon Lord? Hundreds of soldiers attack the heavily fortified Demon Lord's castle. The soldiers can use the magic called Lifter to force the castle gate open, but they can only keep it open for a moment before it closes. During that moment, only 12 soldiers can break through. 
the soldiers can only use lifter magic three times. The 36 soldiers who make it through the gate return triumphantly as the heroes who slew the Demon Lord. But the soldiers who were left behind are imprisoned by the Demon Lord's minions. They're taken back to the castle prison cells and turned into slimes. The heroes save them after defeating the Demon Lord, but unfortunately they go home as slimes. So the soldiers who went home as slimes are jellymen? But there's an exception. The soldiers can combine into a super soldier with the strength and size of a hundred ordinary soldiers. The super soldier has the power to defeat the Demon Lord alone, but since his body's too big, he can't pass through the gate, even when it's opened by Lifter. And so, deprived of his magic's effectiveness, the wicked super soldier is seized by the Demon Lord's underlings and sent home in defeat as a giant slime. Combining soldiers? That's just silly. It's to illustrate that the object can't be too big. I get it. That's really easy to understand. It is? I guess you don't know video games either. It's a dumb metaphor. I guess it works. At least that's an explanation for why things get jellified. <laughs> it's all thanks to Mayuri's hint. Mayushi was helpful? Yes. Great insight, Mayuri. <laughs> Yay! But it's still a hypothesis. It hasn't been proven. How would you prove it? With human experiments like CERN? If Okabe and Hashida send volunteers test subjects, I'll happily experiment on you. Human experimentation sounds kinda dirty, if you know what I mean. But I refuse! I'd rather play the doctor than the subject. Same here. No, not in the way he's implying. Idiots. Gracie gives us a cold stare and shrugs her shoulders in exasperation. As I keep saying, the real problem is what the phone wave uses as a lifter. That and one other thing. How come the discharge phenomenon and angelification only happen during a certain time frame? We may not understand everything, but we've perfected the art of demailing. Isn't that our final answer? Sending mail to the past is amazing, isn't it? No, I guess it's not a real-time machine unless we can send people to the past. Even CERN has failed to send humans through. If you believe what Teeter says, it won't be another, what, 24 years ago that there's a true time machine? I, I totally read that right, too. I answer Kurisu's sarcastic question with a nod. I haven't responded to, like, anything in, like, an hour or two. I've just been reading and just blanking out. What 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 the fuck is even going on anymore? Daru, do you know? Do you know Mayuri? I I I don't really want to ask you. You you scare me. <clears throat> we answer with a with a nod. Physical time travel is impossible for us at the moment. We lack the funds and facilities available to CERN. That may be true, but you do have Teeter's phone number. Or not his phone number, his email at least. So if we could get in contact with Teeter, who knows about these things, then he could help us defeat CERN. Is, is that not not a possibility? I think it's a possibility. I mean, again, who, what better to use against CERN than CERN itself? And Teeter does have CERN technology. And yet we are realized a form of time travel. We send data to the past. We should investigate the phone way further. We need to understand what's going on. I have, I have some fun ideas for how to use D-mail. I know how you feel, but we can't today. If we shake the building again, Mr. Braun's sure to blow a gasket. We'll raise the rain or kick us out of the lab. We can start experimenting again tomorrow, but this I will declare now. I step onto the couch and take a look at each lab mem in turn. You have to take off your shoes, it's dirty. Today! Uh, what day is it? The second? Monday? August 2nd. August 2nd, 2010, is a date which will live in infamy. For on this day, we, the future Gadget Laboratory, have developed the first successful time machine in the history of mankind. It's not the first CERN beat us. And you can't even say we developed it. It happened by accident. <laughs> it seems that my assistant doesn't know the meaning of the word serendipity, 
Pelicillin, X-ray machines, dynamite. These inventions and more were all born from coincidence. I guess. But Chris Chan, you said before the time machines don't exist, right? Now you admit they do. It's just that I have... It's just that I have to admit it for now. If we investigate how the phone wave works, it might turn out to be something that only seems like time travel. Keh. <laughs> Does nobody have any respect for my grand declaration? De declaration? Declaration. I feel like declaration is a word, but I don't know what it means. Don't complain if I take all the credit for inventing the first, second, whatever, time machine in human history. The 66th round table conference ends here. Dismissed. Wait. That was a roundtable conference. I know that. And it's even the 66. Who cares what kind of table it is? Here's who gets up from a chair and stretches. I'm gonna go back to my hotel, take a shower, and sleep. My Yushi has to go to work soon. I'm incredibly tired too. Let's just sleep today. Let's just sleep today. When I lie down, I find myself unable to sleep. Though, part of me is so frightened by the dark secrets we've uncovered. The curiosity and excitement are too much to bear. We built a time machine that could send emails to the past. It's like a dream. But it's real. And it's ours. As I start thinking of ways to use it, my imagination spreads out to infinity, driving the last vestiges of fear from my mind. Fair, 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 fair. And we're back to thinking this is just a game. <laughs> Standing in absolute darkness. How long have I been here? I can't remember. I can't move. I can't feel. I can't see. Well, that sounds familiar. Sounds like a place where you don't have freedom in space. The world is empty. No, not empty. A voice resounds in the blackness, as if whispering in my ear, as if screaming from far away, as if dozens of people around me are speaking at once. Where am I? You are beyond the event horizon. Where time and space Switch places. Suddenly the darkness is dispelled. Huh. <sighs> An ocean of stars fills the heavens. The sight is breathtakingly beautiful. However, one point in space lacks stars. I notice that point. I stare at that point. My body starts to fall. I'm falling through the sea of stars. No, not falling. I'm being pulled. Pulled into a rift of other darkness, which not even light can escape. In an instant, my consciousness has exceeded the speed of light. Stars flash past and vanish from sight. Light itself is but a dust in my wake. Logic screams that this cannot be! Nothing can move faster than light! That would contradict the theory of relativity! You aren't moving. That voice again. It comes from behind, overtaking my faster than light consciousness. At the same time, it seems to lie in wait at my destination. Why do I hear Christina's voice? Why am I calling her Christina even in my dreams? You aren't moving. I understand this, but explain those same words. Explain, Christina! Explain, assistant! Explain? I'm really flubbing today! Remember what I said. Here, space and time switch places. You can't move through space. Only through time. But your time is stretching out to eternity. I accelerate. I can hardly breathe. How can you breathe? <laughs> Feels like something is crushing my body. One second for you, an eternity for me. As I observe you from a distance, 
I see you as a still object. I fall. I am pulled. To the depths of the dark. Or perhaps to the end of the universe. But even beyond the speed of light, I'll never reach it. Am I looping? No, that's not it. Is the end running away from me? That's not it either. Stretching. What is stretching? Space? No. No, no, no. Time. Time is stretching. Don't look back. Eternity is not infinite. Time stretches towards eternity. Yet, it has an end. Something approaches. It approaches slowly, a stark contrast to the stars flashing past. Is it really approaching? It looks like it's standing still. Its slowness gives it that illusion. I don't know what it is. But it is something. The event horizon. The other side. I try to reach towards it, but my hand won't move. Don't look back. You will see only yourself, trapped in a second stretching. You will see only yourself, trapped in a second stretched out to eternity. Slowly to a stop. But still I keep falling. The end never comes. An asymptotic... An asymptotic... An asymptotic approach to zero. When will the second pass? Time and space have switched places. A second stretch out to infinity. One second becomes 0 0.1 seconds. 0 0.1 seconds becomes 0 0.01 seconds. Infinity, etc., 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 etc. When will I arrive? Gradually, time shortens. Gradually, my perception of time lengthens. Face forward. Struggle on. I realize my courage voice is probably the worst voice I've ever tried to do for a female, but I can't do a high voice and a deepish voice at the same time. She has a, a deeper voice, but it's still feminine. So I, I can't change my tone to match hers. Even if I can go pretty high? Ish. I can't get her... Her voice. No matter how close I get, I can never reach. To the Demon Lord's Gate. Suddenly her words take on an amused tone. The Demon Lord's Gate. You don't have the key. You can't pry it open. I try to shout. My mouth won't move. Mustn't look back. You will be captured by the Demon Lord's minions. Whoa! Pictures from the Jellyman's report flicker through my brain. My body! Don't look back. I want to look back. I want to go back. So I just got a, an email that I can't read, and I don't think it was supposed to play right there. Maybe it was to break the tension? I wanna go back. I can't look back. Yeah, I, another one? I can't go back. I face towards the thing. The thing! I face the future of becoming a jelly man. What is with these emails? Well, frozen for eternity. Nice static! You know what? I could play better fucking static than that! 